All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Take heed, lest there should be in any one of you an evil heart of unbelief in falling away from the living God. But exhort one another day by day, so long as it's called today, lest any one of you should be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. That's from Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. What is the writer here by inspiration saying to me? Be careful. Take heed, lest there should be in any one of you an evil heart of unbelief in falling away from the living God. Oh, that's why it's so important that we have fellowship with brethren of like faith. Exhort, encourage one another. Ah, friends, it's the easiest thing in the world to apostatize, to turn away from God. Now, let me say this right up front. I have never known a brother I haven't even heard of a member of the body of Christ just right out of the blue saying, hey, I'm going to turn my back on Christ. I'm going to have nothing more to do with the fellowship of the saints. I'm not going to be associated with the church. It just doesn't happen that way. That may have occurred sometime in the history of the church. I don't know, but I've never heard of such. It doesn't, uh, it just does not uh, work that way. We don't literally and willfully, deliberately, just all of a sudden uh, turn our backs on Christ. No, 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 no. Uh, we remember the love that He showed toward us. We remember the wounded hands, uh, the broken heart. We hear Him saying in the midst of the agony of crucifixion, Father, uh, forgive them. We remember when Jesus said to our hearts, uh, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. We don't turn our backs on that kind of love, just uh, willfully and uh, knowingly. Uh, uh, no, no. <clears throat> but uh, I do remember the Apostle Paul, in speaking to the church at Corinth, said uh, in 2 Corinthians, you recall, chapter 11 at verse 3, he said, But I fear, lest by any means, as Satan beguiled Eve in his craftiness, your minds also should be corrupted from the simplicity that is toward Christ. Now, we remember about Satan's uh, deception. Uh, we remember how he deceived Mother Eve, do we not? We've talked of it many times. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, uh, the serpent, more subtle than any beast of the field which Jehovah God had made, uh, he said, yea, hath God said, uh, uh, you shall not eat of all the trees of the garden. Uh, Mother Eve said, of all the trees of the garden we may freely eat. Uh, but of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat thereof, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now listen to Satan. Satan said, Thou shalt not surely die. He, God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, you'll be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now listen. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when the woman saw that the fruit was good for food, lust of the flesh, when it was pleasant to the eye, lust of the eye, Oh, and desired to make one wise, the pride of life. She took, ate, gave to her husband, and he did eat with her, through verse 6, Genesis chapter 3. How did Satan tempt Mother Eve, friends, through all three of the only avenues through which he may approach to tempt you or me today? In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, John said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father does not in him. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Now, these are not of the Father, but of the world. The world passeth away, and the lusts thereof. Oh, but he that doeth the will of the Father abideth forever. Friends, 
Satan is uh, a genius, and his resourcefulness is uh, unlimited to tempt us away uh, from the Lord. Yes, Paul said, I fear uh, that Satan in his subtlety, uh, just like he tempted Mother Eve, could corrupt your minds, uh, lead you as the children of God away uh, from the Lord. You know, it's happened uh, time and time again. If you went back to the book of Joshua, for instance, now you remember in Joshua chapter 6, God gave the well-fortified city of Jericho <clears throat> into the hands of the ancient Israelites under the leadership of Joshua. Oh, and I gave Joshua instructions. Form your men after this order, the armed men, seven priests blowing ram's horns, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, and the balance of Israel uh, bringing up the rear. Now he said in that order, march them around the city one time each day for six days. On the seventh day, march them around seven times. Let the priests blow long on the ram's horns, and the people give a great shout, and the walls will fall down flat, and every man will go up straight before him. How did the walls of Jericho fall? Oh, by faith, Hebrews 11, verse 30. Uh, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they'd been compassed about uh, for seven days. Uh, faith does what God said. Oh, and God is always faithful in fulfilling His promises. But now let's notice more particularly here. This is a strong, well-fortified, heavily armed city. Every man went up straight before Him. Now, they took the city of Jericho without the loss of a single man. Now you think about this. God gave them victory over their enemies, and there are many armed combat troops in that city. They took that city without the loss of a single man. But do you remember a man named Achan? Now God had said to Joshua, giving you the city, but the wealth of that city will not be plundered, no sir. Anything of value in that city will be placed uh, within the coffers of the tabernacle. It is devoted, it devoted to God. It will be turned over to the priest for use, of course, in the spiritual affairs of Israel. They were to take nothing from the city. Normally, when they overran a city, then the spoil was taken and divided. It's but not this kind, not this time. No, no. God said, the wealth of the city is devoted to Jehovah. But Achan, <clears throat> Achan was a soldier. He saw the marching and the blowing and the shouting. He saw the walls crumble. He saw the victory that Israel enjoyed. Uh, he knew, but uh, Achan saw a goodly Babylonish uh, mantle, oh, and uh, 200 shekels of silver, uh, and a, a wedge of gold of 50 shekels. And he took it. And he hid it in the earth in his tent. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, what, what was going on here? Oh, Achan didn't say when they were marching around that city, he didn't say to himself, I, I'm going to deny God. I'm not going to pay any attention to what God said. I'm going to do my thing. I'll have. But it never occurred to him the very idea. He's a loyal soldier in the army of Israel, and God has promised this city, and we're going to tell. What happened? Circumstances were just right. Mm -hmm. He saw that goodly Babylonish mantle, uh, 200 uh, shekels of silver, and that wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, and uh, uh, man, uh, nobody's around. The, the opportunity was just, just exactly right. He took it. God said the city was devoted. You can't take that. Well, after they had taken the city, hadn't lost a single man, the next city they intended to overrun among the enemies of Israel and, of course, for the wickedness of the people in the land, and that's why God is driving them out, was the little village of Ai. Now, Ai was an unwalled city, not many men, and Joshua sent spies up there to spy out Ai, and uh, they came back and said, hey, there is no use in sending the entire contingency up there. No, no, just send two or 3,000 men, and we'll wipe that place out no time flat. So Joshua sent 3,000 men up to Ai, on wall, small village, and the men of Ai chased that 3,000 back home and slew 36 men. Oh, Joshua fell on his face before uh, the altar, and, and uh, the elders did the same thing, and, and they all night uh, prayed to God, and uh, 
uh, God said, and I'm using just uh, regular terminology, uh, stand up, man. There's sin in the camp. You are not going to win when you rebel against me. And uh, you can't win today in sin. We can't decide that we're going to, uh, no, no. Well, Joshua didn't know anything about that. Uh, God said, you call Israel together tomorrow and call them before you by tribes, or then call them before you by families, or then call them before right on down, and Achan was taken. And Joshua said, Son, give glory to God. Acknowledge what you've done. What, what has occurred? Oh, he told him about uh, the mantle, and the silver, uh, and the gold. And uh, what uh, was to be done? God said, Sin has to be destroyed from the camp in toto. I say. They took Achan, sons and daughters, cattle, sheep, oxen, asses, everything he had, the mantle, the silver, the gold. They stoned them with stones. They burned it with fire. They buried and raised up over it a great heap of stones. They put sin out of the camp of Israel. But, but, but wait a minute. This, Achan was a, a soldier in the, in the armies of Israel. He, he was a child of God. That's right. That's right. Well, well, why would he do a thing like that? What was it you said, Paul? But I fear, lest by any means, as Satan beguiled Eve in his craftiness. You see, Eve knew God's will. She quoted it. She told him what God had said. We're not, oh, but wait, wait. Satan created in her a desire for the material. He focused her attention on the immediate. Uh, hey, that's the prettiest fruit in the garden. Yeah, you know, that, that's good for food. I, I've never tasted that. And then besides that, man, when I eat this fruit, uh, fruit I'll become as gods. I'll, I'll know good and evil. I'll pride of life, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye. Friends, when we take our eyes off the only goal worthy of human consideration and concentrate upon the mundane, upon the immediate, upon the physical, upon that which can be observed with the physical senses, we're going to violate God's law. We're going to desert Him. We're going to lose our souls. For instance, in Luke chapter 16, we've noted that passage many, many times. Beginning verse 19, there was a certain rich man clothed in purple and fine linen, faring sumptuously every day. Let me ask you, anything really wrong with that, uh, per se? No. No, as a matter of fact, if you have the business acumen to make a fortune, uh, make a fortune. Now, that's, that's fine. It's somewhat like Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, you remember? Uh, verse 19, Lay not up yourself treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust consume, where thieves break through and steal. Now, he's not saying that it's wrong to have wealth. No, no, it's the contrast. He said, But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth consume, where thieves do not break through nor steal. Why? Verse 21, For where thy treasure is, there will thy heart be also. That's the point God is making uh, through His Son. Where do I place the emphasis? Is it upon the spiritual or upon the physical? There's nothing wrong with the physical. I'm a physical being. I live in a physical world. I have certain physical needs. We understand that. Now, as we've often said, that's not primary. That's secondary. I am an immortal spirit. I'm going to live forever. Where? Ah, that, that's the question I need to answer. Where do I place the emphasis in my life? Now, let's uh, notice that passage. Luke 16, verse 19, certain rich man clothed in purple and fine linen, faring sumptuously every day. Oh, and a certain beggar named Lazarus laid at his gate full of sores, but he didn't stay there. Rich man went out and said, hey, man, you come in here, and you have a good meal, and I'm going to clothe you, and I'm going... No, no, that, uh, that didn't happen. The rich man didn't have that kind of concern uh, for his fellow man. In other words, from his lofty position of wealth and prominence, he didn't take into consideration the poor and the needy, the common man, like Jesus did. Jesus gave up equality with the Father. And he came to this earth, took upon himself flesh and blood, and died for a reprobate, a sinner uh, such as I. He took into consideration the needs of the precious souls of men. This rich man didn't do that. 
Well, the record says Cain's past the beggar died, was carried away with the angels into Abraham's bosom. Oh, the rich man also died and was buried, and in Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, with Lazarus in his bosom. And listen, he cried and said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. Oh, then this rich man was a descendant of Abraham, a Jew. Well, certainly. He was circumcised on the eighth day of his life. Sure. He was a child of God under the law. Why, certainly he was a child of God. There's no question, never been any question about that at all. Well, why, why is he lost, friends? Think about it. Where did he place the emphasis in this whole world? Aha, uh -huh. on his wealth, on his riches. He's too busy enjoying himself, you know, and uh, spending for his own pleasure, uh, possessing uh, for purposes. He concentrated on the wrong thing. Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I'm in anguish in this flame. And Abraham said, son, son, yes, he's a descendant of Abraham. He is of the Jewish race. He therefore under the law was a child of God. Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and in like manner lives receive evil things. But now here he is comforted, and thou art in anguish. Besides all this, there's a great gulf fixed between us, that none may cross over from thence to us, nor may any pass from hence to you. Friend, what do we have here? We have a child of God <clears throat> who is in Tartarus, a place of punishment, and that is eternal. You remember the scene of the judgment in Matthew 25? The last verse of that scene of the judgment, verse 46, these shall go away into eternal punishment, <clears throat> but the righteous into eternal life. The same word is descriptive of the duration of both places. You see, made in the image and the likeness of God, we cannot cease to be. No, no, we're going to live forever. There's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Oh, and this man was a child of God? That's right. And that's why Paul is warning the Corinthians and through them warning me. Satan is the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, as we've noted many times, and his resourcefulness is unlimited to place barriers, uh, obstacles, difficulties, yea, temptations uh, before me. He intends for me to be eternally lost. Yes, but God so loved me that He gave His Son, that through faith in Jesus Christ, I could stand in a conciliatory relationship with my Maker. The rich man didn't say, oh, I'm not interested in being a child of God. I'm not intending to do those things He wants me to do. I'm, I'm just... No, he never said that. He just assumed that everything would be all right. He's a, a child of God. That's a friend. I've got to give attention to things that are spiritual. Uh, old Satan can uh, block out those uh, spiritual goals uh, if we aren't careful, and he makes it appear that uh, I'm doing the right thing. You know, that's not important that I concentrate on it. How frequently that happens today. Did you know many people would say they're too busy making a living, uh, you know, to attend all the services of the church or uh, to engage in personal work or uh, to teach their fellow man? Oh, what about a life? What? Are you busy making a living and missing out on a life? Uh, that happens frequently. Oh, work, that's required. That's a, a necessary uh, process. There, there's no question about that. Titus 3, verse 14, you remember he said very clearly, let our people learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. Oh, labor with your hands is essential. Uh, that's the way the maintenance of the physical family is provided. We understand that. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul said, if any man won't work, neither let him eat. So then that's a part of our responsibilities in this material world. Yes, but why are you working? Do you thank God for your job? 
Are you aware of James 1, verse 17? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variation, neither shadow that is cast by turning. Friends, every blessing of mine in this life is a direct gift of Almighty God and He has provided for the salvation of a sinner such as I, then where am I to place the emphasis that I make a living? Well, certainly I need to make a living. Yes, oh, but as the rich man, if that's where I spend my entire time, if that's all I'm concerned with, if I do not recognize the fact that the job I have is a gift of God, oh, and the increase that I have is a gift of God, every blessing that is mine is a gift of God, if I don't look up, if I don't think spiritually, then I'm going to lose my soul. And that's so true of many, even in the church today. As we would say, so busy making a living, I don't have time to make a life. I don't have time to serve the Lord. Well, the very idea. And you know, sometimes parents will even say, well, I'll tell you, my children, it just takes my full time rearing my children. Why, sure, that's a full time job. We understand that. Uh, what are you teaching them? Will they be eternally lost? Are you exemplifying before them Christian principle? Have you devoted your life to the service of God? Oh, do they see in you an example of spirituality? Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Your children uh, will be lost. Sure, rearing children is a full-time task. We understand that and we appreciate that. Absolutely. It's kind of like uh, Martha and Mary. Uh, Martha served, Mary sat at the Lord's feet, uh, the Lord uh, pointed out that Mary had chosen the better course. Is he rebuking Martha for service? Why, certainly not. That's commended. Uh, someone, I believe, has written a book, one of the ladies, or at least they've lectured on this, uh, Martha's hands, Mary's heart. That's it. Uh, it takes both. Yes, Sam. The service with the hands. Oh, but the commitment, the dedication with the heart. And on occasion, there are times when I put spiritual things ahead of even vital, important, needed physical things. We understand that. Why then are men deceived by Satan? How is it they are led away? I think uh, Hebrews chapter 2, beginning verse 1, uh, probably explains that uh, to us. Uh, let us uh, take heed uh, and remember that every transgression and disobedience under the law, uh, brought a just recompense of reward. What was it? Oh, he said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first was spoken unto us through the Lord, hath been conveyed unto us uh, by them that heard him, uh, God also working with them, uh, both the signs, wonders, manifold powers, gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. How shall we escape, he said, if we neglect so great a salvation, which having at first been spoken by the Lord, was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. How easily we neglect. We overlook spiritual things. You see, saving faith is a purposeful conduct on the part of man. You see, the natural man just does what comes naturally, and we understand that. We have to make a concerted effort to be spiritual minded, but how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Did you notice what he said? We need to take heed lest we drift away from them. Oh, uh, one version says, unless we let them slip. It's the easiest thing in the world to drift away from spiritual things. Friends, we can't apostatize. We're all subject to that very thing. How can I prevent that? How can I determine in my heart that I'm not going to turn away from the Lord? I'm not going to wind up in the day of judgment in disappointment and in a lost estate? Oh, I need to concentrate every day on His Word, uh, put into practice these principles, uh, because otherwise good people uh, think everything's all right. I'm, I'm going to heaven when I die. I love my wife or my husband. I love my children, provide for my family. Friend, that's all well and good, but uh, you'll lose your soul if you aren't very, very careful. Satan knows exactly how to deceive me, how to place the emphasis in my life on the material, the physical things. That's the way that rich man was, child of God, but he wound up in punishment, and so it will be 
for many, even in the church today. We allow Satan to deceive us. Uh, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Paul said, that's verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Oh, he said, I buffet my body and bring it into subjection, lest after having preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Oh, friends, we need to gird up the loins of our minds. We need to concentrate on things that are spiritual. For as touching those who were once enlightened, tasted the heavenly gift, made partakers of the Holy Spirit, tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, and then fell away, it is impossible to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified themselves afresh, the Son of God put him to an open shame. Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. You are viewing Preaching the Gospel, a nationwide program brought to you by the Churches of Christ. They would love for you to come and visit their services. Why not come this next Lord's Day? Call us if you need assistance in locating a Church of Christ in your area. Maybe you'd like to have your own copy of today's lesson on audio cassette or CD. We offer these free of charge. Write down the number of today's program and contact us by calling 1-800-683-3120 or email us at ptgwjw at aol.com. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia, 30721. Often we get requests from those of you who want to learn more and study further about the Bible. We have available to you free of charge a new Bible study series. The first of this six lesson series will be mailed to your house at your request. This Bible study is also offered free of charge. Preaching the Gospel is under the oversight of the elders at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. It is fully funded by members of the Churches of Christ. And now, back to James. What is Paul actually saying in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 when he said, The natural man receiveth not the things of God, their foolishness to him, and he cannot know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Is he saying that the average physical being in this world cannot comprehend the Word of God, has no access to the source of faith that would just... No, 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 no. What he's saying is most people concentrate on the immediate, the physical. This is as far as they think, that which can be observed with the physical senses. That's the natural man. You see, spirituality is attained. We have to work at it. We have to seek through faith to accomplish the will of God. Thus, we concentrate on things that are spiritual in nature. Knowing that I'm an immortal spirit, I'm going to live forever. Death isn't the end. Death is where it begins. Give consideration to the gospel of Jesus Christ. 